were ushered into Mr. Disney's office and told we could ask questions. And when it came my turn, I asked him if he was the one who was buying these 30,000 acres in Central Florida. And, and it stunned him so that it made me think maybe he was. Well, he said, no, I'm not buying any property out there. Uh, he said, that would be no place to put a park. He knew entirely too much about the area not to have had a reason to. No, I didn't believe him. He wasn't a very good liar. Four years after Walt Disney opened his first park in 1955, Walt was looking to expand. Unfortunately for Walt, Disneyland was surrounded by businesses he did not own, so expanding Disneyland would be too costly. He also took note that only about 5% of guests visiting Disneyland came from east of the Mississippi River, where at the time almost 75% of Americans lived. That led him to look elsewhere. From New Orleans to New Jersey and beyond, Walt looked for a spot to build a second park. In November of 1963, Walt ended up touring Florida by plane, and while flying over a swamp in a middle of nowhere military town called Orlando, it said he immediately knew that he would build his next park there. Walt liked this location due to its proximity to Interstate 4 and the Sunshine Parkway, making it an easy location to access by car. Orlando was also home to a military base that would soon become Orlando's airport. It made it so guests could come by land or air. Most importantly though, the land was copious and untamed, so Walt could build as he pleased unlike in California. Now that he had chosen where, Walt had to actually acquire the land. Orlando had enough cheap undeveloped land for seemingly endless expansion, a nearby access to both Interstate 4 and the Sunshine Parkway. But Walt was worried about landowners raising prices on him when they found out it was the Disney company buying their land. So Walt decided that he would send realtors out to Orlando with fake company names to buy up land without them even ever knowing. Some of these fake companies were called the I-4 Corporation, the Latin American Development and Management Corporation, and the Reedy Creek Ranch Corporation. Some of those names are now memorialized on a window above Main Street USA and the Magic Kingdom. Walt also had them hold off on finalizing any paperwork before there were enough landowners willing to sell, just so no one caught on that it was Disney buying. Fox 35 News interviewed the family of the former landowners who sold to Disney. They retold what it was like for them finding out who was buying their land. When Walt came to look at Orlando, there were only about 200,000 people living there, and the city was surrounded by swamp. Mary Dimitri, the daughter of the man who sold land to Walt, said they had about 12,500 acres of land. But after a year of mortgage payments, they decided they didn't want the land anymore, so they sold to Walt. Walt saw something in the swamp most couldn't. Mary Dimitri said the reason it was one of the first bits of land to sell was because Walt Disney literally was flying over the land looking at Ocala. And when he came over to Orlando, he saw the wetlands on our property and said, that's Tom Sawyer's Island. The Dimitri said, so what was lemons for us was lemonade for Walt Disney. The plots of land before people knew the buyer was Disney went for around $100 an acre. The land was nearly unusable swampland. Some of the landowners reportedly lived out of state and hadn't even seen the land before as they'd gotten it through inheritance. The first purchases of land recorded took place on May 3rd, 1965, with one plot of land accounting for 8,380 acres of swamp and brush land at a cheap $107 an acre. The next day on May 4th, the Orlando Sentinel published an article saying the purchase of land confirms and will add to rumors that a major industry is coming to Orlando. But they didn't know what the industry was. People in Orlando speculate that it could be NASA buying the land to build something akin to the Kennedy Center, or possibly a wealthy family like the Fords or Rockefellers that were buying the land. Some even believed it was the Mafia buying the land to hide bodies in the swamp, or to maybe build a casino. But on May 20th, 1965, the Orlando Sentinel published a story addressing the rumors that Disney was building an East Coast Disneyland in Orlando, but concluded it was not true based on a statement from Walt saying he was going to invest $50 million into the Disneyland and didn't want to build another park. Around that time was the 10th anniversary of Disneyland, and Disney was inviting journalists from around the country to come to Disneyland and talk to Walt. It's said that when Disney got around to the Florida, Georgia, Alabama region, they invited several of the large papers who ended up not being able to make the trip. Someone suggested including Orlando, a city that Ridgeway, the publicist for Disneyland, was unfamiliar with. Ridgeway did some research and found that the local Orlando paper, the Sentinel Star, which became the Orlando Sentinel, had a respectable circulation. And so, an experienced journalist named Emily Bavar visited Disneyland and interviewed Walt. Uh, a trip in celebration of Disneyland's 10th anniversary. And I was one of several Central Florida reporters who was out there at the time. And uh, we were ushered into Mr. Disney's office and told we could ask questions. And when it came my turn, I asked him if he was the one who was buying these 30,000 acres in Central Florida. And and it stunned him so that it made me think maybe he was. Well, he said, no, I'm not buying any property out there. Uh, he said, um, 
that would be no place to put a park. He said, your average mean rainfall, whatever the number was, he knew. And uh, he called up Orlando, Central Florida, which was unusual because nobody at the time had really ever heard of Orlando, mm -hmm. and he knew exactly where it was. He knew how many tourists were here every year, how much it rained all summer. He knew entirely too much about the area not to have had a reason to. No, I didn't believe him. He wasn't a very good liar. Three days later, the Orlando Sentinel published another article with the headline, We Say Mystery Industry is Disney. Shortly after, General William Potter, who previously worked on the New York World's Fair and started handling Disney's Florida project, was staying at the Robert Meyer Motor Inn. When he went to get his breakfast on Sunday morning, he saw the paper's headline and story. He immediately called Walt in California. Walt's lawyer, who was in charge of buying the Florida property under fake names, was Robert Price Foster and was also in Orlando at the time. When he saw the paper, he immediately called Walt, fearing he would catch the fall for the leak. Walt owned up and said that it was he himself who leaked it, and took full responsibility. Walt originally was going to confirm around November 11, 1965 that he was buying the land. But after the Sentinel released their article, Walt had then Florida Governor and former Jacksonville Mayor Hayden Burns to confirm the story on October 25th. Florida has always kept pace with the world that we live in. Florida's tomorrow seems even more promising. With the new $100 million Disney attraction, economic growth will be spurred throughout the entire state. We're proud to be the new home for Disney's largest and most ambitious project, and we certainly welcome Walt Disney to Florida. Governor Burns, at a convention that had nothing to do with Disney, originally announced a partnership, calling the new theme park the greatest attraction in Florida history. The governor also said that Walt Disney had extended to your governor the privilege of making the official announcement that Disney Productions is the mystery industry. It said the announcement was followed by wild applause. That is seemingly the governor's most remembered moment in his career, as while well looking deeper into what he did in politics outside of this Disney announcement, he was known for running on and enforcing segregation. It is unsettling to think that the first official announcement of what would become Disney World came from a segregationist who was voted up two years later because of his views. After having his next project revealed to the world, Walt Disney releases a short film explaining his new Disney World in Orlando, explaining why he picked that location. As you can see on this map, we have a perfect location in Florida, almost in the very center of the state. In fact, we selected this site because it's so easy for tourists and Florida residents to get here by automobile. And what he plans to build there. We know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Production. Then he goes on to reveal his plans for the land, showing off a map that has future projects on it. Of course, there will be another amusement theme park in Florida, similar to the one in California. We're now developing a master plan that encompasses the theme park and all the facilities around it that will serve the tourists. As originally planned, Walt and Roy Disney and the governor of Florida meet for a press conference to talk about Disney World. In this meeting, they mention how Walt is going to bring millions of dollars to Florida. I don't think you've mentioned the amount of money at the initial investment. That's a heck of a lot. <laughs> that would indicate the size of this project. Well, there was a time in my life I didn't think there was that much money. Uh -huh. But, uh, well, you see, the, this, the initial stage here has to top what we have, or at least be the equivalent of what we have now in California. And uh, there's 54 million in Disneyland now, another 20 million this year. So we're going to have to start somewhere around there. Now, of course, that doesn't include the other facilities, the hotels and the things around it. Now, when you begin to put all those together, it's going to be uh, well over uh, 100 million, 100 million plus, uh, at least. But my big brother says we can do it. <laughs> He's a money man. <laughs> In 1966, Walt Disney released his Epcot film detailing his dreams of creating an experimental prototype city of tomorrow alongside his new Disney park. For Walt, Epcot would be the most important part of Disney World. After all was said and done, another rumor broke out. Supposedly, Martin Anderson from the Orlando Sentinel knew before the announcement that Walt was buying the land, but did not say anything. Supposedly, 
He, the mayors of Orlando and Winter Park, and an influential banker met with Disney in 1960 or 1961 to discuss the project, and he was sworn to secrecy. It's said that he didn't want to ruin Orlando's chance at a better economy, so he didn't say anything. Up until he died, Anderson denied the rumor, though. Oddly enough, he came from the same paper that Emily Bavar came from.